Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Monday Morning Devotions. Good to be with you at the start of a brand new week. <clears throat> I hope and pray that, uh, that the week is going to be a blessed one uh, in the Word as well as in life. And uh, that's what we're desiring, is it not? I hope and pray that your day yesterday was a wonderful day in the house of God, wherever you worshipped, wherever you attended yesterday. Uh, pray the fellowship was sweet. Pray the presence of the Lord was great. And you were encouraged by the Word of God. Brother Michael, good morning. Judy, good morning. Uh, this morning, what I'm going to do, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. I'll jump straight into it. Ephesians chapter 4. I want to I want to sort of, uh, Lucy, good morning. This morning, uh, I'm going to uh, carry on a little bit from what I was sharing yesterday. I'm not going to go over old ground, but I want to look at, I, I was just, last night as I was just sitting here, I was just sort of reminded of this passage and I went there and uh, the Lord started speaking to me through it. Uh, and then probably from Tuesday to Friday, I think what we're going to do on Tuesday to Friday is just be in the book of Philippians and uh, got a got a devotion already for ready for that for tomorrow. And uh, the I guess the theme for Monday through to Friday is it will be joy and adversity. So we're going to look at the book of Philippians from tomorrow to Friday and see how was it that the Apostle Paul could have joy in adversity. And I think that would be an important uh, subject topic for us uh, to look at. Lindsay, good morning. Uh, but this morning, what I want to talk to you about is this thought. Stop dragging that dead weight around. Stop dragging that dead weight around. Yesterday, we looked at the, the thought uh, about the heart of man and how that, uh, the, the, uh, the Old Testament says that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. We went to the New Testament. We had a, had a look at the New Testament heart, what that was. Uh, is, it, is it desperately wicked? Is it deceitful? And I hope we came to the conclusion that no, it's not because it's where Christ resides. It's where the Spirit dwells. Amari, good morning. Congratulations. I don't know if you... Uh, I think most of our lady, ladies know what we're congratulating you about. So uh, congratulations on... Uh, on uh, your your second pregnancy and uh, praying for a uh, praying for a uh, a healthy um, term and and all of that. So God bless you both. God bless you both, you and Benji. Um, so yeah. So this morning we want to look at another aspect to that. We're going to look at the old man and the new man. Now the old man, the old man is who you were without Christ. All right, who you were without Christ. That's the old man. That's the old nature. That's what we term today as the flesh, okay? Then we've got the new man, Carolyn, good morning. Then we've got the new man, and the new man is who you are in Christ. And, and that's your spirit that's been revived, resurrected. As we said yesterday, it's where Christ dwells. And look at what the Apostle Paul says here in, in Ephesians 4, 22. He says that you put off concerning the former conversation. Now, that word conversation, we generally attribute that word to conversing, to, to discussing. Pastor Samu, good morning. Uh, but the word conversation here in our Bible means the conduct or the, or the sum of your life, how you conduct your life. So he says that you put off uh, con uh, the conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So there's nothing good about the old man, the old nature, the flesh. Right? There's nothing good about that. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now, notice something in this verses. The Lord Jesus Christ has made ways for us to do exactly what he's saying, because it's our responsibility to put off and our responsibility to put on. Or it's our responsibility to stop walking in the old nature and it's our responsibility to start walking in the new nature. Okay, And there's a way that we do that. Uh, so it's our responsibility. You, you and I, and I can't do it for you and you can't do it for me, you have to put off right, concerning the former life, the former conversation, the old man. Now Jesus has already dealt with the old man. We looked a little bit about that yesterday. We'll look at some other scriptures dealing with that this morning. But if you notice something about the old man, uh, let's go, uh, hang on, okay, the old man, let's go to Romans chapter 6 for a moment, Romans chapter 6. And let me share this with you about the old man, the old nature. 
All right, Romans chapter 6, look at verse 4. It says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. That's the new man, the new nature. When we got saved, we were, we were baptized together with Christ into death. We died with him. And now that we're saved, we've been resurrected spiritually. We've got this new life, this new nature, and that is who we are in Christ. All right, but there's that struggle that I spoke about yesterday. Verse 5, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, this is important. He wants you to know this. He doesn't want you to be ignorant about this. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified. Now, what does crucifixion speak of? It speaks of death. The old man, the old nature is dead. That's why the thought for this morning is stop dragging that dead weight around. It's a dead weight. So know this, he says, our old man is crucified with him that the body of the sin that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. Now Romans 6 talks a lot about that. I I believe by memory, the word sin is mentioned 19 times in this chapter. Only once is it likened to the action of sin. All the rest is in reference to the sin nature. That's already been dealt with. All right, It's already been dealt with. So he wants you to know that the old man is crucified. And yet for so often, we, we, we drag around that dead weight. Now, Hebrews says this. Let me read this to you in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12, verse 1, he says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Every weight. Now, part of the every weight is the old man because he's a dead weight. You don't want to be carrying him around all your life, all right? And the sin, which just so easily beset us, and I believe the sin that easily besets us in the context is unbelief, right? And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And the truth in this verse is this, is that you cannot run with patience the race if you're carrying around this dead weight. Okay. Uh, Worst case scenario, it will stop you. Best case scenario, it'll slow you down. Either way, it's difficult to run a race with excess weight. Now, if I was to carry on my back uh, a person the same weight as what I am, (laughs) I would probably only get from here to the front door and I'd be like, that's it, I'm done, I've had enough, I can't carry on anymore, right? Well, just think about that spiritually, dragging around a dead weight, you know, excess weight. You know, in the natural, it's so hard to lose weight. There's so many different fads out there, so many different diets out there. You've got intermittent fasting, you've got the carnivorous diet, you've got the paleo diet, you've got keto diet, you've got veganism, vegetarianism, all that. It's, it's all out there. And, and some work for others and not for, for, for some and all that. Yeah, and people do lose weight through that. But have you ever seen those TV shows where you, you they, they, the people write a journal and, and, and out on the table before them is everything that they've eaten in a week and you look at that table and you think, wow, how disgusting. You've got pizzas and burgers and cakes and chips, uh, Coke and whatever, you know what I mean? It's all there and you think, oh, did I eat that in the week? And you're like, yeah, well, you kept the diary, you know what I mean? And uh, so you look at that, but then what they do is once the contestant of these weight loss games go on and they start losing weight, they they give a visual of what you've lost. Sometimes they measure it in um, in tubs of, of butter, you know, 500 grams, or whatever, and it stacks up. And Or sometimes they use kilo bags of potatoes. Back in the day, you used to be able to get five kilo bags of potatoes. Now I think get two and a half, 2.5 kilos. Let's say five kilo bags, and and so you see, as you lose your weight, the bags of potatoes add up. Now, a good brother of ours at our church, Brother Cameron, has, has uh, I think he shared with us yesterday, he's lost, was it, I think it was 38 kilos. That's a lot of weight to lose. Now, when you think about that, that's about seven five kilo bags of spuds, right? Seven five kilo bags. That's a lot of kilos, right? Now, you try lifting seven five kilo bags of potatoes at once and you would struggle. You may not even be able to do it. And you say, well, how can I carry that ma- that much weight? Because it's added gradually and your body compensates for the excess weight and you just get by on life. 
It's the same spiritually. Spiritually, you you compensate for that dead weight that you're carrying around, known as the old man. And, uh, you know, you get used to him being dragged around. It's, it's like, well, it's just this is part of life. You know what I mean? But once you start shedding the kilos, once the, once the weight of the dead man is dealt with, you've got this, you know, this liberty. You've got this freedom. You've got this burden that's been lifted. And we sing that song, Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. And often we think about salvation and what a blessing that is. But you know what? Once the burden of the dead man And we know this, and Paul said, know this, that the old man is crucified. You don't have to drag him around. And and the moment that you you dealt with that, it's like, wow, this freedom is amazing. I don't have to to be bothered by the excess weight of this dead man, this flesh, who I used to be without Christ. And it's a big issue today because there are a lot of that are still dragging dead weight around. Every now and again, that old man likes to resurrect himself. And we hate the thought of, of looking at that dead weight, and we hate the thought of, oh, yeah, you know, that's terrible. Well, that's what the old man is all about. And then, and then Paul says that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And again, it's our responsibility to put, put this new man on. Paul says in Romans 13, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh and the lusts thereof. So the choice comes back to you and to me. The choice is, is yours whether you want to drag that dead man around, that dead weight around, or it's the choice is yours if you want to put the new man on and walk in the newness of life and spirit with the new man. And so he, he says that again back in Romans. He talks about that. We, we, read, a, we, just, we read that in Romans 6. And uh, he says in, in verse 4, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism in a death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the, of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. And that's exactly what the Lord wants you to do. He wants you to walk in the newness of the life that he's given you, the, the new man. So he says, knowing this. So look at verse number 7. He says, For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, he's talking about the the old man. The old man's dead. You you and I have been free from sin. We've been freed from that. Verse 8, now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing, again, knowing, don't want you to be ignorant about this, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what he says, knowing this. He says, knowing this, knowing, reckon ye yourselves. You've got to understand this, that you do not have to drag the dead weight of the old man around in your life. But you are to reckon to be dead indeed to sin and alive under God. Now, here is the thought. Sometimes the more you drag that dead weight around and don't, don't put off that old man, that old nature, that flesh, the deceitfulness of the flesh, you 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 struggle to comprehend and believe that there's there's a newness of life. There's something out there that's for me. I, I you know I just I, I'm trying to deal with it and do whatever. And ah, what do I do? Well, as a matter of fact, Paul, under the inspiration of the Spirit, gives us the clue. Right, he gives us a clue. So back in Ephesians four, look at the verse in between putting off and putting on. He says this in verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now, Paul mentioned that again back in Romans. Romans is such a fantastic book. Romans chapter 12. Look at what he says in verse number number two. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How are you transformed? You're transformed by renewing your mind. And the word of God is something that will renew your mind. How do you put off and how do you put on? By the renewing in the spirit of your mind. Now, here is, here is a thought. You must renew your mind to who Jesus Christ is scripturally. Biblically, and you say, what do you say that? 
Brethren, there are too many Christians who have an opinion of who Jesus is. Now, the world has their God. They formulate in their mind who God is and who God isn't. Well, the world will say, my God allows me to do this. And my God, if my, my God wouldn't kill all these people, and my God would let, would let me live in sexual immorality, and my God would let me do all this sort of stuff. And, and we, we get on the world because of what they do. They, they create a God in their own mind. And brethren, let me just say this, Christians are no different. Christians are no different. They formulate in their mind an opinion of who they believe Jesus is. Oh, my Lord would allow me to do this. And my Lord would allow me to do that. And, and, you know, and, and instead of renewing their mind to who Jesus is biblically. And that's important because who we understand Jesus is according to the scripture helps us to put on the new man. Because as Paul said back in Romans 13, let me read that for you, Romans 13. Because you can't put on the Lord Jesus Christ in, in essence. You can't, like, let's just picture going to the wardrobe. I'm going to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? If you don't know who he is scripturally, and he says, verse 14, Romans 13, 14, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So you've got to, how do I, how do I know who, what do I, who, what is Jesus like? Well, read the Bible. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, once you, cha you, you, you change the way you think about who Jesus is according to the scripture, and once you start changing the way you think, you begin to change. You're transformed. It's a, it's a metamorphosis, all right? We, we metamorphosize. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a word. I'm just making up words again. What does Paul say in Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3? Because I love the Christian life because to me, the Christian life is all about change. And, uh, you know, you think about change and how that Jesus Christ brings about a change to our life. And I'm grateful for that. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, Paul says this in verse 17. Now, the Lord is, the, is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I love that. I love that. You know, that's the thing about church pastors, if you're watching. Allow the liberty, allow the presence of the spirit to be in your church because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, right? Not liberty. Anyway, I'm not going to say it. We know that it's not a liberty to sin. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed. Metamorphosis is where the Greek word for this word change and transformed is. We're changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. And it's the spirit in you, the new man that, that brings about that change. And it should be a day to day change but you don't change unless you renew the spirit of your mind to the scriptures and and by the way the father has already predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son and some are taking a little bit longer than others because we're dragging that dead weight around we don't want to keep dragging that dead weight around of the old man so be renewed in the spirit of your mind Allow the, allow the spirit through the word to change you. And change is the evidence of a renewed mind. Change is the, a lot of people don't like change. They struggle with change. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about bad change. I'm not talking about changing doctrine. I'm not talking about changing a biblical philosophy or a biblical worldview. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about changing. You know, like you get home from work, you change out of your work clothes into something a little bit more relaxing, right? You want to put your tracky dacks on and a nice T-shirt, a daggy, even if it's a daggy old T-shirt, you know what I mean? But you change. And this is what Paul is talking about in Ephesians. You want to put off, you want to change. Hey, it's time for a change. Put off the old man. He's dead. He's been dealt with. Why are you dragging him around? Deal with that. Put on the new man through the renewing of the spirit of your mind. And be changed, be transformed, and walk in that newness of life. Run with patience the race that is set before you, and do it joyfully, knowing that you've lost that excess weight. That old man has been dragging you back, holding you back, you know, just having you fall over and stumble and everything. Deal with it, kick him to the curb, 
You're done. Your history, I'm, I'm determined now to be renewed in the spirit of my mind and I'm going to put on the new man because I want to walk in newness of life. Brethren, make it happen today. Make it happen today. Deal with him and walk in that freedom. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the truth. And how powerful is your truth? And I pray, Lord, that it would just become a part of us that the Spirit of God in our spirit would just give us revelation of this. And Lord, I pray that we'll all deal with the excess weight, that we would stop dragging that weight around and that we would walk in newness of life. We love you, Lord. Thank you for today. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you. Thank you for joining me this morning. I appreciate that. Look forward to being with you tomorrow. And remember, tomorrow we're going to start a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a series in the book of Philippians, four chapters. We might get four devotions out of it. Who knows? But we're going to look at joy in adversity. Join me tomorrow, seven o'clock. Love to see you. God bless you, and see you then. Bye for now.